Hello everyone. I, Dr. Pooja Chavla, professor at ISF College of Pharmacy, Moga, welcome you all on the platform of IQAC, IIC uh, led online expert talk. And today the speaker for um, uh, uh, today is uh, Dr. Balbir Singh. Dr. Balbir Singh is working as professor and former head in Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. Dr. Balbir is kind enough that he has uh, accepted our humble request and uh, spared his precious time for us. And the uh, topic of his uh, talk is uh, role of chromatographic techniques in natural products analysis. Uh, I just want to take the opportunity to introduce Dr. Balbir Singh. He's working as, as I've already mentioned, as a professor in GNDU. And he has got over more than 22 years of experience in teaching and research and has more than 70 publications to his credit. So I welcome uh, Dr. Balbir Singh on behalf of entire ISF CP family. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Now uh, over to Dr. Balbir for his lecture. So uh, thank you, Dr. Pooja, for your uh, nice words of introduction. So with your permission, I think we will start this lecture. Yes, sir. Please start. Screen is visible. Uh, yes, sir, it's visible. You can carry on. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Professor Burbi Singh, Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Gunanakti University, Amritsar. I'm here for my lecture. Uh, the topic is the role of chromatographic techniques in natural product analysis. I have prepared this uh, lecture in a very simple way so that even undergraduate student can understand it very well. So whenever we uh, talk about the natural products, particularly we talk about the drugs from the natural sources, the natural sources like plants, animals, microbes, marine, mineral, and plant tissue culture as a source of biomedicine. And out of these, uh, the majority of the drugs we obtain from the plant sources, about 70% drugs we obtain from the plant sources. So plants, all the plants are not bioactive, but certain plants, they show some therapeutic activity. We call them the natural drugs. And why these plants are bioactive? Because they contain certain chemical constituents, which we call them secondary metabolites. The secondary metabolites, they are synthesized uh, as a result of the metabolism of uh, primary metabolites. And these secondary metabolites, they are not utilized uh, by the plants for their growth and development but they are stored in some specialized structures. And at low doses, they show some therapeutic activity in human beings and some other animals. These secondary metabolites, they are classified into various classes like alkaloids, glycosides, flavonoids, tannins, resins, volatile oils, etc. And uh, <clears throat> whenever we use any herbal drug, either we use uh, uh, entire plant and in case of shrubs or trees, we prefer a specific part of the plant. Why specific part of the plant is preferred? Because uh, that a part of the plant is selected which contains the maximum content of these secondary metabolites because the bioactivity lies in these secondary metabolites. But there is a problem when uh, we obtain the raw material from different sources or some other reasons and they uh, sometimes there is a difference in the therapeutic activity therapeutic activity is not uniform and there are certain reasons for that when we authenticate any plant material we standardize any plant we have to ensure the proper content of these secondary metabolites and the reason of a variation of these secondary metabolites can be the biochemical variations deterioration due to uh, treatment and storage or due to the adulteration and ultimately the biological activity of that particular plant is affected and we can analyze the content of uh, the various chemical constraints by different means a number of techniques are available you can use titration with this chemical assays to find out the content of these candy metabolites but the chromatography is the most preferred technique the reason is that by using chromatographic techniques, you can separate and you can analyze 
the various chemical components which is having a negligible difference in their physical and chemical properties. So as far as the spermatography is concerned, we see the German botanist Michael Schwett, he first time he separated certain compounds by using this column and he found that uh, there is a separation of a different colored bands on the column and from here he coined the term chromatography which is made of two words chromatos and graphos that is stand for color and uh, to study he had the idea that the components they are separated because of their different colors but nowadays we have seen that we use this chromatographic technique for the separation of uh, many kinds of uh, substances which are uh, colorless so modern definition of uh, chromatography if you see that it is a physical method of separation in which the components to be separated are distributed between two phases one of which is stationary while other moves in a definite direction so this system this consists of two phases one is a mobile phase other is a stationary phase and the mixture which contain the different components those components they get separated between these two phases while the separation occurs and the stationary phase uh, uh, may be a solid or it uh, can be a liquid supported on a solid or it may be a gel while the mobile phase uh, it is either gas or it is a liquid we have a number of chromatographic techniques available which are classified on different criteria on the basis of interaction of solute to the stationary phase, on the basis of chromatographic bed shape, and on the basis of a physical state of mobile phase. And on the basis of interaction of solute to the stationary phase, if the stationary phase is a solid, then there is uh, the phenomena involved in the separation is adsorption. So this is known as adsorption chromatography. And if liquid stationary phase is there, the phenomena involved is the partition. And this is known as a partition chromatography. If there is an exchange of ions, this is ion exchange chromatography. Or if the separation occurs on the basis of size, like gel chromatography, it is known as size exclusion chromatography. While on the basis of a chromatographic bed shape, it is either two-dimensional or it is a three-dimensional. In two-dimensional, it is also known as planar chromatography when a uh, layer is spread on a uh, smooth surface. This is a thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography. Advanced form of thin layer chromatography is uh, uh, known as high performance thin layer chromatography or HPTLC. Whereas the uh, three dimensional chromatography here, the stationary phase is packed into the column. This is a simple column chromatography and its uh, advanced form is HPLC, that is high performance liquid chromatography. Well, on the basis of uh, the physical state of mobile phase, if the mobile phase is liquid, we call it liquid chromatography. If it is a gas, it is gas chromatography. And if it is a supercritical fluid, we call it supercritical fluid chromatography. And other criteria of classification that is according to the purpose of use. It can be analytical or it is a preparative purpose. In analytical chromatography, it is qualitative as well as a quantitative. As far as the qualitative is concerned, it is used for the confirmation of absence or presence of any type of components. And it also gives the idea about uh, the different components, the complexity of the mixture and used to check the purity and identity of the compound and used to establish the fingerprint of uh, extracts. And it is used to monitor uh, both column chromatography and organic chemical reactions. As far as quantitative chromatography is concerned, uh, here we determine the exact quantity or the amount of the particular component in a mixture and other purposes for preparative application in preparative this technique is uh, used to separate a compound in sufficient quantity so that it can be further used for analysis so we have seen that we have a number of chromatographic uh, techniques available but how we can choose a particular 
chromatography for a particular sample. So there is no hard and fast rule, but certain criteria we follow that. If your mixture contains substances of a similar chemical type, in that case, we prefer partition chromatography and substances of different chemical types are present, we use adsorption chromatography. If you want to separate gaseous and volatile substances, we prefer gas chromatography. And if you want to separate ionic substances from inorganic substance, we use ion exchange chromatography, column chromatography, paper or thin layer chromatography. If you want to separate ionic from non-ionic substances, then ion exchange or gel chromatography is a preferred technique. And for the separation of biological materials or the compounds of high molecular weight, here we prefer gel chromatography or electrophoresis. And in all the cases, if these methods are inadequate and uh, not sufficient for the separation of the mixture, in those cases, we use high performance liquid chromatography, which provide a good result for the separation. <clears throat> So various techniques are aware here. We, I will discuss only very simple techniques like thin layer chromatography, most usually the HPLC and gas chromatography. As far as thin layer chromatography is concerned, as it is clear from its name, it can be defined as the method of separation or identification of mixture of components into individual components by using finely divided solid adsorbent or it is spread over a glass plate and a liquid mobile phase is used and we deposit a very thin layer about 250 micron on a glass plate the synonym used for this uh, type of chromatography is drop chromatography strip chromatography spread layer chromatography surface chromatography or open column chromatography so why this tlc is preferred because uh, uh, it needs a little equipment, requires very little time for separation. Very small quantity of sample is sufficient for analysis. Spraying with corrosive agents for identification is permitted because we have available large range of adsorbent. Sensitivity of detection is more used for adsorption partition or ion exchange chromatography. And separated components can be easily recovered, possible to visualize components for identification by uv light can be applied for preparative separation with the aid of thicker layers the sample has components which damage or destroy the column in hplc and the solvents used would attack the sorbet in liquid columns that's why we prefer this uh, thin layer chromatography and moreover no electricity is required for this and we have available a large range of adsorbents in case of tlc uh, these stationary phases are silica gel, modified silica gels, alumina, cellulose powder, diesel gold, modified cellulose, and uh, cephadex gels, etc. When we start this TLC chromatography, first we select the chromatographic plates. Uh, these are available in different sizes like 20 into 5 centimeter, 20 into 10 centimeter, 20 into 10, 20 centimeter, and we select according to our requirement and a thin layer of adsorbent is deposited that is about 250 micron on this uh, smooth glass plates. And we use different methods for uh, depositing this layer, pouring method, dipping method, spraying method, spreading method, etc. And the one important uh, part required is the activation of plates. Because when we deposit a layer on the thin plate, we make a slurry and then <clears throat> air dried. Even then, it the moisture retained by the adsorbent, which interferes in the resolution of the component, the separation of the components. So these plate must be activated by keeping it in the hot air oven at 100 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes. And when moisture or any liquid is completely removed, then we use this plate and uh, the next step is the selection of solvent system. This is very important. When we select a mobile phase in case of TLC, we select the solvent based on the nature of substances to be separated, nature of stationary phase used, mode of chromatography, whether you are using for normal phase or reverse phase, or separation to be 
achieved whether it is for analytical purpose or preparative purpose so th this is a series of uh, a solvent uh, this on the polarity these are arranged in increasing order of polarity starting from very non polar to highly polar either we select a single solvent or if it does not uh, solve the purpose we use two or three solvents in a specific ratio to adjust the polarity so then sample sample application if it is a solid sample dissolve in some volatile solvent and if it is concentrated liquid dilute it then it is applied with the help of capillary in the form of spots and then further chromatogram is developed either you can develop by ascending method descending method horizontal method step wise method multiple repeater method or two dimensional techniques you can use to develop the chromatogram and at the end we find the spots which are separated or which the components separated on the chromatograph you can easily locate the spots if they are colored and if the separated components are colorless then either you can use physical methods or chemical methods in physical method you uh, keep your uh, uh, plate in uv cabinet at a different wavelengths where the different spots are appeared and in chemical method you use some spring reagent which react with the separated component and appear as a color and those separated component appear chromogenically on the chromatogram and they are easily detected and finally the chromatogram is evaluated for qualitative or quantitative in qualitative we simply calculate the rf value whereas uh, in quantitative we have to find the exact quantity of the separated component for that we use direct method that is uh, the quantitative determination done on the chromatogram you use visual comparison spot areas and weight relationship or spot densitometry is used while in case of indirect methods you separate the spot dissolve in suitable solvent you match the absorbance and uh, you can calculate the uh, its uh, uh, exact concentration or quantity so finally we develop this type of uh, a chromatogram by using tlc or its advanced technique hptlc and when you develop a chromatogram it can be used as a standard uh, further uh, by using chromatographic pattern or fingerprinting pattern further you can uh, compare your sample and uh, you can find that if exact replica is produced it means your sample is authentic and if it is different then uh, you may doubt your raw material so this technique further if you want to for a, a quantitative separation then you can use thicker layer about 2 mm the technique is called a preparative thin layer chromatography where the sample is applied in the form of long sticks or bands and they are separated further uh, then scrapped off from the chromatogram and uh, further they are dissolved in a suitable solvent and uh, uh, by evaporator than solvent you can separate a particular component from the mixture and application of tlc it is used for separation of all classes of natural products and is established as an analytical tool in modern pharmacopoeias different uh, categories like acids alcohols glycol alkaloids amines micromolecules like amino acids proteins and peptides and antibiotics can be separated by using this technique and uh, you can check your sample for its purity if your chromatogram obtained it has a rounded single component or support spot it shows that uh, your component is pure and it is used for the examination of reactions and for the identification of a uh, different organic compounds and uh, also used for separation of inorganic ions separation of amino acids vitamins and application of tlc in quantitative analysis and this is one technique and another most uh, preferred technique is high performance liquid chromatography you see that in normal column chromatography when we run the column 
the solvent is moved as a result of uh, this this uh, gravitation force and the movement is very slow and it takes uh, in case of natural products if you use the normal column chromatography it takes many days uh, for the separation of component if you want to go for the isolation it may takes the months and if you want to increase the efficiency of uh, that uh, simple column you have to push the solvent with greater pressure or speed so that uh, the speed of moving the solvent through the adsorbent as well as the through the loaded extract it moves uh, fast and the separation is fast but if you increase the pressure beyond a certain limit, the glass column it breaks. And now, if you want to move the solvent with the pressure, you have to use some special strong materials. So preferably, in case of uh, HPLC, we prefer uh, stainless steel columns and very high pressure is used. And uh, the separation can be achieved within a few minutes to an uh, hour. And high performance liquid chromatography is one of the most widely used technique for identification, quantification and purification of mixture of uh, organic compounds. And advantages of this technique is very specific, sensitive and precise method for complicated samples. Ease of sample preparation and introduction, speed of analysis is high, many types of uh, Components can be separated by using this uh, particular thermolabile components by using HPLC. If we compare an open column chromatography, it is at atmospheric pressure and the normal flow rate, it is 1 to 5 ml per minute. If we increase the pressure from 1 to 2 bars, this technique is known as flash chromatography and uh, you can increase the flow rate two to ten times and in low pressure chromatography one to five bar and uh, the flow rate is one to four ml per minute and if you further increase the pressure five to twenty bars this is known as mplc that is medium pressure liquid chromatography and the flow rate is three to sixteen ml per minute and if you further increase the pressure more than twenty bars this is known as high pressure or high performance liquid chromatography and the flow rate is increased to, to 20 ml per minute and this is the simple diagram if you see in modern <coughs> chromatography systems there are four solvent reservoirs um, and at a time generally we use two reservoirs solvent one and solvent two two solvents are added these are further uh, attached to the degasses which absorbs uh, the dissolved gases as well as if any impurity is present in the solvent then they are released to the mixing vessels and uh, the flow rate is adjusted these two solvent they are mixed in uh, some specific ratio to adjust the polarity then it is passed to a high pressure pump which creates a very high pressure and solvent is moving further with the greater pressure and it is passed to the pre-column in the pre-column the packaging material is same as in the analytical column the difference is the size is bigger when the solvent pass through this pre-column if any kind of impurities are present these are adsorbed in the pre-column then it is further goes to uh, this is the area of sample injection this is injection port here the sample is introduced into the uh, you can see that the system and further it moves to the analytical column where separation occurs the components which is having a high affinity with the mobile phase they are eluted first and they reach to the detector detector is further attached to the recorder and finally in the computer system the response is observed in the form of a peak in case of hplc uh, you can see here uh, here these are solvent reservoirs uh, the high pressure is created through the pumps and the see here mobile phase is moving and uh, along with components as passes through the column reach to the detectors you see the response is observed in the form of peaks and these number of peaks shows that this number of components are present in the mixture and area under the 
each peak indicates the quantity of that particular component in a mixture. So in HPLC, qualitative as well as quantitative determination can be done simultaneously. So chromatogram is obtained like this, and we calculate the retention time as well as the area under the peak to determine the exact uh, mass or the quantity of the component separated. So these are uh, various uh, modes and the pumps used are reciprocating pumps, displacement pump and uh, pneumatic pumps are used and mostly reciprocating pumps are preferred. Here, this is a piston, it is moved attached to the motor and it is moved to and fro. When it is coming back, this valve is open, solvent moves inside and when it is pushed forward, this valve is open and solvent is moved further with the greater pressure. And uh, the main part of uh, the system is the column. This is called the heart of the chromatograph, which is made of uh, stainless steel. And the packaging material is used the high quality of uh, silica gel uh, with the different uh, uh, sizes are available. And if we see the packaging material used is uh, called pellicular particles or the porous particles, they are packed and uh, usually column uh, used are uh, uh, the length 5 to 25 centimeter, diameter of the column 3 to 5 mm and diameter of the particle is 3 to 5 micrometer for analytical columns. And this is uh, the type of material which is packed in the column here. You introduce your sample when it is passed through the column reach to the detector then it is recorded in the form of uh, like this uh, this is component one two three and four uh, this is how separation occurs and these are the columns which are available in different sizes and uh, we just fit into the uh, system as per our requirement and finally detectors which are used in hplc either we use the bulk property detector or solute property detector Bulk property detector, uh, they detect the component along with the mobile face. It uh, uh, can detect the property of uh, that is a mobile face as well as uh, the, the solute present. While solute property detector, it detect only the presence of a, a particular component. In the, these are UV visible absorption, fluorescence detectors like this. And the refractive index detectors. And in case of a reverse phase uh, liquid chromatography, here we use C3, C8, and C18 columns. And here, the uh, in a reverse phase, the mobile phase is a polar, where the stationary phase uh, used it is a non-polar. And this is uh, how we can use this HPLC for the analysis of uh, typical herbal products. Uh, one uh, plant is valerian and the main component present in the valerian is valerianic acid and acetoxyvalerianic acid. Here we use the standard, these two compounds and here we use the different uh, products of different brands of uh, valerian and we obtain the chromatogram of different products. And we find that uh, this valerianic acid and acetoxyvalerianic acid, they are present in different concentration see in the various products and this is how by using uh, HPLC or the chromatographic fingerprinting you can analyze your uh, products from the different sources and what's the main difference between these all these brands these can be easily identified by using this HPLC chromatographic fingerprinting file similarly this is a chemotype of a European chemotype and North American chemotype of fever few. We, we compare this fever plant from two different sources. And Ashbury fever few tablets. Uh, here we see that from the different brands, we can compare by using this uh, chromatographic techniques.
and the applications of uh, HPLC in various fields in chemistry and in bioscience, in pharmaceutical, consumer products, clinical, environmental, etc. And it is used in new drug development analysis, purity impurity analysis, separation of isomers, support of biotechnology products, toxicological studies, biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetic studies, metabolic studies, clinical studies, forensic, diagnostic, animal drive, post-mortem. And HPLC has a wide range of application and in the separation or analysis of natural products, it's a wonderful technique which are otherwise very difficult to analyze because our plant extract, they are very complex. There's a mixture of many components. So HPLC is a very uh, wonderful technique for the analysis of uh, natural products. And if we have a uh, gaseous or volatile substances, the technique uses a uh, gas chromatography. Particularly one class of compound is volatile oils, which can be analyzed by using this gas chromatography. In gas chromatography, we use the mobile phase as a gas. And if we see the instrumentation, this is a compressed gas, carrier gas cylinder here. The mobile phase is packed into the compressed gas cylinder and this act as mobile phase passed to further. At, at this place, a syringe which contains the sample, it is introduced into uh, this column. The column is surrounded by the oven where it is operated at a high temperature because you have to evaporate uh, the sample. It must be in the gaseous phase. After that, the component, they are uh, when they are eluted out, reach to the detectors, then it is the response is given to the recorder. Again, the sample separated components, they appeared on the chromatogram in the form of peaks. And the mobile phase used uh, in gas chromatography, the different gases, we prefer helium, argon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. And the very sophisticated uh, samples, uh, when the other gases, they, they cause some problem like uh, hydrogen, it is in inflammable, and gases, sometimes they are not suitable to the detectors in all these cases. The argon is preferred, but it is uh, very costly and usually helium is used in India. So stationary phase uh, used uh, uh, in uh, chromatography, it can be a solid or it can be a liquid supported on a solid. If you use solid, we call it gas solid chromatography. If some liquid is a deposit on the solid support, it is gas liquid chromatography. So the we in case of gas liquid chromatography we play, prepare the slurry of uh, the solids coat with the liquid then uh, evaporate the excess of solvent by using rota vapor the solvent is absorbed by the uh, particles and uh, appears on the surface as a liquid phase and the stationary phase is used uh, uh, when the liquid is supported on the solvent, must have a low volatility, thermal stability, chemical inertness, solvent characteristic like uh, you have to uh, see. And the particularly used columns in the gas chromatography are packed column, or you use porous layer open tube. The, here we use a very long capillaries, long columns are used in gas of chromatography, uh, case of gas chromatography and uh, packed column it is packed with a, a uniform sized uh, uh, silica gel particles or the other materials as as we require in open tubular column a simple layer is deposited on the wall and in wall coated tablets open tube column here wall is coated with a layer of uh, uh, your stationary phase And the resolution is very much important in case of uh, uh, gas chromatogram. You see these three diagrams. We always say that the resolution is good if the peaks are sharp and at a much distance so that it can easily find out that the components are well separated. 
and here you see in first diagram these are appeared as this round so this is not a good resolution and if you we want to make the peak sharp we have to increase the column efficiency and if we want to increase the distance between the peaks we have to increase the solvent efficiency so ultimately to improve the resolution this resolution depends upon the column efficiency and solvent efficiency column efficiency in the length of the column that is the band broadening occur and this can be controlled and the one of the important uh, parameter the concept is height equivalent to theoretical plate is considered and second we uh, have to see the solvent characteristics where solute solvent interactions play a great role and when we use the theoretical plate we calculate the number of theoretical plate that is n uh, to increase uh, to adjust the length of the column for well uh, good resolution so n is calculated from the peak see this is a peak and we can calculate uh, this the uh, by formula 16 tr over w e square where this tr is a retention time and this is the width of the peak and from using this n this is fit into the, this formula n is directly proportional to l o h and this h is if we decrease the h then number of plates are increased and if we increase the length the number of plates are increased that is uh, this is directly proportional and this is inversely proportional so ultimately we have to adjust the length for good resolution which depends on the height and this is further we have see that the this h that is height equivalent to theoretical plate it further depends upon the column parameters mobile phase and flow rate and these parameters they are well described by the van demeter or it is known as a rate theory here h is directly proportional to a plus b mu plus c mu where mu is the linear gas velocity a is the molecular diffusion b is uh, sorry a is the eddy diffusion coefficient b molecular diffusion and c is the resistance to mass transfer that is this rate theory or van demeter uh, theory explains that why there is a broad bending what are the reasons and how we can make our peak sharp the h that is uh, uh, eddy diffusion coefficient it depends upon see this is the column when there is a no uniformity in the size of the packing material when the solute pass through this column the different particles they take different paths some are moving straight some are through zigzag path and ultimately the peak broadening occur so this can be decreased by using the particle size the uniform particle size of the packing material this is one parameter c and the second one is the b that is a longitudinal diffusion if we use the low density gas we see that as the gas moves because of its low density this is solute it is due to diffusion it moves backward as the gas moves further it is moving further so diffusion occur along in this region as well as a reason of that the bad band broadening occur to control that we use high density or high molecular weight gases and third one is the resistance to mass transfer that is c the <clears throat> uh, material you are using the liquid that is supported on the solid support from that the material is released and if you are using uh, low volatility well, there is a greater uh, diffusion of that so you use the greater density of uh, this uh, uh, you can say depositing material and this is how you can calculate all these parameter that is for band broadening uh, A is controlled B is controlled and C and finally this type of graph is needed this is a when we uh, accept that at this part uh, optimum mu is obtained which is uh, optimum gas velocity to run the system so ultimately when the uh, 
component pass through the column they are separated and they are detected by using different detectors in case of uh, gas chromatography we use thermal conductive detector flame ionization nitrogen phosphorus electron capture detector and mass spectroscope mass detectors so mass detectors they are very important mass detectors here uh, when your uh, component separated component reached to the mass detector which is attached either this can be attached to the hplc system also and gc system also so mass detector first uh, it ionizes the material and fragmentation are further detected according to the uh, mass over charge ratio and overall mass of uh, separated fragments is determined and when you uh, use this mass detector along with the HPLC or gas chromatography. This is known as hyphenated technique. Here we can simultaneously separate as well as detect the mass, which is helpful in the identification of the even the structure of the compounds. So by using mass detectors, we make the hyphenated technique. We call it HPLC uh, MS or GCMS techniques. So there are various application of gas chromatogram and at the end when we use different uh, chromatographic system they have certain conditions if you are using liquid chromatography you uh, uh, if you have a solid sample it must have to be dissolved into suitable solvent otherwise you cannot separate uh, by using liquid chromatography so liquid chromatography always says if you dissolve i can dissolve in case of gas chromatography, the component must be evaporated, must be in the gaseous phase. So it says that if you evaporate, I can separate. And when you use hyphenated technique like with the mass spectroscopy, you must have to ionize your separated component. So this LCMS says if you ionize, I can recognize. So this is a, a very brief introduction about the different chromatographic techniques which are used in the nature product analysis. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Bilbir. Uh, you are perfectly right that it was a brief introduction because uh, uh, it is such a vast topic and you have covered it in such a beautiful manner. And then in the last when you said, uh, told about the liquid chromatography, if you dissolve, I can... So, uh, that was perfectly uh, like uh, I have never heard uh, such thing before. So thank you so much uh, for such a wonderful uh, lecture. And uh, Dr. G.D. Gupta is with us. So I would like to request Dr. Gupta to please say a few words. Sir. Uh, namaskar, sir. Namaskar, 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 Aksab. So thank you very much, madam. I have listened the complete lecture. And uh, Dr. Balvi is given the very, uh, you can say, highly technical information and uh, he used the mathematical application including each and every equation in a justified manner and uh, complete the all component which is required for the chromatography concept so i hope that this lecture it will be the highly useful and effective to the pharmacist as you know that those who are the working in the pharmaceutical chemistry as well as in the pharmacognosy and not only this some of the BPharm students those who are the learned about the chromatography concept they can also go through it because nowadays I feel that number of the books available in the markets and they have the lot of you can say information this information is not in the correct form so that is why the purpose of behind of this types of the lecture series to directly connect the people, those who are the uh, dedicatedly working in a concept base of the technique. So I hope that everybody or the person who want to the learn about chromatography go through this lecture and utilize the techniques. And even that if we have some of the question, you can send on our YouTube channel and we can connect with this uh, question with our expert so that you can uh,